Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father, we thank you for the time, the opportunity, and the joy that you give to us to see this particular set graduate, commissioned, and charged in our very eyes. We thank you that six years ago, they came in and almost without any spine, not sure of what we shall do. Some of them we felt can they cope, but we saw you helping us. And today we are standing together to celebrate them. We return thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, this hour, we need you to, Lord, speak a word into their inner man, something that will follow them for many years and perhaps for the rest of their years. Please carve something in their heart that they will never forget again. Please walk with us and walk with them. We have spent years, but we believe that you are able to sustain and to keep them and to perfect what you have started with their lives. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. The church that I've written, that they have asked me to transcribe and we have worked upon, is dealing with your personal response so that you can be indeed a battle axe in the hand of God. So I will read what I sense God had been saying to you, which you have read many times, but I will repeat it this morning and then draw some charge. Jeremiah 51 has been the passage that you have chosen. And I will now repeat it. From verse 20, I'll read it up to verse 23. Thou art my battle axe, and you are my weapons of war. For with you, I will break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and its rider. And with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and its rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee Will I break in pieces old and young? And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with you the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the Osman man and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. Now when I have read this passage over and over and over again, three things quickly jumped at me which I want you to bear in your mind as uh, this uh, 2018 God's battle acts. The first thing is that God is the one who said thou art my battle axe. 
when God declares what he intends to make you I want you to know that God has all it takes to make you that battle us. And so as we send you forth, I send you forth by faith. Because God himself has committed himself to your lives. You are not going to be a casualty. You are not going to fall by the wayside. You are going to be God's battle axe. When I talk about you becoming God's battle axe, it's something that I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit will give you understanding about. But let me first establish that because it is God that said you are my battle axe, he is able to make you that which he says he will make you. And it shall be so in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you understanding? So as you go, I want you to know that God is committed to your life. We have talked about several things. Brethren have exhorted you what you must do, how you must be careful, how you must not allow internet, WhatsApp, and all those social media to tie you down from reaching your destiny. I want you to note all of that. But I want you to know that God himself has made a commitment. You are my battle acts. When you need them to pray, remind God. Say, Father, you say, I am your battle acts. How you will use me to cause your purpose to be done in my generation, I leave it in your hand. You said, I am your battle axe, and I will not be anything less than that. I will not bring disgrace to your name. I will be your battle axe in essence in the name of Jesus Christ. Bear that in your mind. Number two, I want you to see that passage. You will notice that God repeatedly used a personal pronoun Say, with you will I break in pieces the nations? With you will I destroy kingdoms? With you will I break in pieces the horses and his rider? And with you will I break? You will notice that a, an axe does not use itself by itself. No matter how sharp an axe is, it can never caught anything by itself. Thank you, brother. Even though this is not the perfect axe I'm looking for, yet it's a representation of what you are going to become in the hand of God. And I decided uh, in a brief moment to help you see it so that you can have a clear picture of it in your mind as you are going. And I'll be describing this axe very quickly. But the first thing I want you to know is that if this axe is on the ground like this, can he by itself use itself to cut anything? No. So I want you to know that all that you are going to become and all that God is going to do with you, God will be the one that is handling it like this and using it to do what it says it will do. So that's the second thing I want you to bear in mind. God will use you. Hallelujah. You see, when I was growing up, and I began to pray about what God will have me do, I suddenly hear God say, I will make you a new sharp trash instrument that has teeth and I will use you to break nations. You know, my first misunderstanding of the promise was that I'm the one to do it. So I was running up and down. I will make myself sharp. Suddenly, one day I was praying. God said, did you read what I said? So I went by and said, I will make you. I said, ah! So God, you are the one who will do it. 
So I said, so what is my business? And I want to tell you what God told me. God said, you have only one thing to do. Not two, not three. I said, Lord, what is that? He said, just surrender your life in my hand. So that I can do what I want to do with your life. All of you listening to me here. I know. I know when you go out here. And you tell anybody and say, ah, Uncle Bile is the one that lay hands on me. They say, ah, you mean you know him? Some of your parents, they are so excited. They say, ah, Brother Bile laid hand on our children. To them, it's not a small thing. Two days ago, we were entering a lift myself and my wife and Matthew we were in an hotel and we were entering a lift come and see a drama as I just stepped into the lift the people that were there before us they said ah! oh my god my god ah, today is my day Brad Bile is in the same lift with me ah, hallelujah I've been praying that I will meet you and see I am in the same place. Just pray for me. Just bless me. So I was looking at my wife. I said, ah, ah. And we have not been able to hide ourselves all over the world. Even though we look ordinary here, when you go out, you will know that we are not ordinary. Sometime when you meet your senior lecturers, and they say, where do you come from? I say, do you know I came from Goku? They say, where is that? Where is that? And you mistakenly just say, do you know Uncle Billy Akane? A door may open to you suddenly. It is not because of what we have done. It's because of God said, I will do. Everything you have seen here is because of what God said, I will do. And when I saw God saying, I will do this, I said, so what do I do? He said, just make your life available. Just surrender to me. So I want to charge you, my brothers. Just one thing I want you to do. Surrender to Jesus. Make yourself available in his hand. You may not know how all of those things will happen, but it will happen. You will break forth into nations. He said, I will use you to break nations. Ah. And say, eh? These children, you mean you are going to do that? But the Holy Spirit said, what of you? Were you not an ordinary man? Who knows your father? Who knows your mother anywhere? Which school did I go? When I went to chemistry lab in the university, I was asking a very, very simple question about the man, our lecturer. He made a great fun about me. Because I was asking the difference between pipette and uh, burette. <laughs> you know what is the problem? The school I went, even though I was a science student, I never saw one. So when I said, uh, excuse me, what, what is it? The man just like say, which bamboo school did you come from? So from that day, they changed my name. They called me Bamboo Boy. But you see, that does not stop what God said it will make me. Thousands of people have gathered all over the world because God said, I will make you. I say to any of you sitting before me today, what God said we make of you, he will make of you. Amen. You will walk into it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All powers in heaven and earth, they will be constrained to make sure you become what God says you will be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I'm very concerned, I'm very touched that I'm having opportunity to send you forth into what God says you will be. 
And I'm trusting that God, who never misses targets, he will never miss what he wanted to do with your lives. We are going to talk about you in the future. Your generation will talk about you. You are going to break forces in academics. You will set records that no one else has ever done. In the name of Jesus Christ. When one of our boys left here, and he said, God just said, this is the course he should read. Do you know that? From the first day, until he graduated, and he graduated with first class, the university called him and said, well, you're a scholar. And as a result, there's an automatic job for you. And your job is here. But we want you to do your master's. There's a scholarship for your master's. He came back home here. He said, Dad, what do I do? I said, go ahead. But that's not your destination. I'm expecting a professor in you when you are still about 30 years. Ah! Can that happen? Why not? Why not? When it is God at work, God is going to do it. Hallelujah. But listen now. He said, I will... I will, I will, I will. What it means then is that what do I need to do? Make yourself how? Available. You don't need to do anything other than to say, yes, Lord, here am I. Make me what you say you want me to be. You didn't say I would be a dropout. You didn't say I'm going to be a second wife. You didn't say I'm going to be pregnant for a useless non-entity. You did not say, I will just fall by the wayside. No, 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 no. I'm going to be a battle axe in the hand of God. And that's what will happen to the 74 of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Why did I bring this axe? Why did I bring the axe? I want you now to see me. Are you looking at me? Eh? All the said 18 students, are you seeing me? I want you to see me. I know others are listening, but I'm more concerned about you. Do you know that there are two components in this axe? What are the two components? The iron. What we call the axe head. And what is the second component? The wood. The wood that carries the axe. Now, if anything happens and this iron head fell off, what will happen to this wood? Talk to me now. It becomes light. It becomes empty. It becomes useless. And it cannot cut anything. If you try to use wood to cut wood, you are wasting your life and your time. But let me ask you, can we have an axe? If only if we have the axe head and we don't have the wood, the handle. Will it be an axe? Eh? Why will it not be an axe? There is no handle. There's nothing with which we can do what we want to do with it. So now I want you to follow me very closely because this is about the final issues I want to raise as you go from here. Do you know that this wood is ordinary wood? Ordinary wood. What makes it effective in cutting wood or in digging something is what? Is what? Is the axe head, is the iron. On the outside, the wood is empty. The wood can even look dry. But because of the axe head that it has been fixed with, it has become an implement that can cause anything to happen wherever we are using it. So these two components are the issues I want to raise with you now. 
Can I say to you that each one of you as you are standing here, you are the wood. What did I say? What did I say? You are the wood. Ordinary wood. Ordinary clay pot. This long wood, that is me. I'm just a wood. If this axe head is not there, what can I do? I can do nothing. Honestly speaking, I will become firewood. Eh? Brother, what will I become? Firewood. They will just add me to one fire and begin to use it to, to boil yam. Why? Because the iron head that makes the difference has dropped off. Are you hearing me? What makes this thing heavy is not the wood. What makes it heavy is the iron edge, the axe edge. So what must I now tell you? You are the wood. The Lord Jesus is the axe head. I have discovered that there's no decoration about the wood. And nobody talks about how smooth the wood is. The only thing they see, they define that wood by the axe head. May I say to you, you will be defined by the man of Calvary that you are carrying about in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, so, can I drop this now so that I can now go ahead and show you what you must not allow to happen. I was looking for an axe that if I asked them to bring wood here now and we start cutting wood because I thought I would have shown you the dangers. You know, sometimes when you are using this to cut wood, it may enter the wood and when you want to bring it out, what do you do? You shake it and shake it to bring it out. But unfortunately, while you are shaking it, this connection wears out. When this connection wears out, what happens the next time? It may just fall off. Since the definition of your life is the axe, is the axe head, and you are just the wood who is the carrier. And God has decided he cannot do anything without this wood. What must we ensure? That there should be no wearing out of this point of connection. This point of connection is the point that the devil will like to fight. To make sure that this axe head falls out. So if you are going to serve God well. And I've been. Anybody who came close to me. Somebody came the other day and said. Brother Billy we want to know the secret of your life. The secret of your success. I said what do you want to know? He said because look. We have been watching you for many years. And God has used you. You have blessed us. You have changed our life. You have done this. You have done. No, 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 no. So he was, he was already bringing his notes. Because he thought I would now settle down and begin to say secret number one. Then I will go on secret number two. Then I will move on to the next secret. He was already waiting. He wanted to make a book. The secret of the man of God. I told him that there is no secret. Only one thing. I said this point is the point, the junction that must not wear out. If you lose connection with Jesus, you are a useless wood. So, Brad what have you been doing for all the years? Only one thing. 
I have been servicing this place. Are you hearing me? Young people, are you hearing me? That's what I have been doing all my years. I service this place every morning. Every morning. Nothing is as important to me as this point. Nobody is important to me if I have lost this place. What have I done for all the years? I have done nothing but service this place. That's the only thing I have done and God has done what he says he will do. If God will help each one of you today to service this point, all of those things that can fall is not as important if this does not fall. I'm telling you. Nothing else. You know, I went somewhere to preach and my shoe just collapsed. And I had no shoe again to go and preach. What did I do? I just removed the second shoe and I went barefooted as if I was doing drama. I said, shoe may, may break. Once this did not remove, I'm all right. When I finished preaching without shoes on my leg, and I see hundreds of people coming, crying. I say, Father, thank you, thank you. Then somebody said, Uncle Billy, you didn't have your shoe. I say, sorry, it broke just before I came here. Before I finished, three different shoes. They just rushed. They were just saying, Billy needs shoe. He needs shoe. He needs shoe. Look, if this is not disconnected from your life, men will decorate and deck you with everything you need in the name of Jesus Christ. But if this thing fall out, even if you have a sugar-coated mouth, even if you dress so wonderfully, it is just an empty wood trying to cut wood. Useless. What have I serviced all my years? This junction. I don't beg for money. But I beg heaven not to let this fall out. Since you came here, you notice that nobody bothers you about money. Because that's not what we need. I just need this axe head to be in this place. May you not fall out of your life. So I want you to service it. I want you to make sure it is firmly fixed. Your relationship with Jesus Christ. They have told you about quiet time. They have told you about money devotion. They have told you about fellowship. They have told you all of those are to service this place. Every morning. Sometimes 3 a.m., sometimes 4 a.m. I'm already up servicing this place. So I say, Brother you are not sleeping. I say, I'm sleeping. The only thing that makes you want to come to hear me is because this thing is there. If it falls out now, I will just be one storyteller. I will just open my mouth and say, praise the Lord. You know, when somebody has nothing to say, it will waste time making you to shout 21 hallelujahs because there's nothing in his mouth to say. The axe head has fallen now. So what do you do? To service it because that is the major thing when we will no more be there with you when you'll be alone how do you service this axe head so that it doesn't fall when you meet other friends who are moving like this empty wood some of them they are just empty wood I say yeah hallelujah I love you that's an empty wood don't, don't fall into their hands. They're empty. And all they wanted to do is to take away your axe head. May you never succumb in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, three instructions on how to service your axe head. I want you to turn to 2 Kings. Please go quickly to 2 Kings chapter 6 and then 
I want you to read from verse 1. And once I finish it, I will draw those three issues. I pray that it will settle with your heart. And then I will be leading you to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with you is too narrow, is too straight for us. Brothers, it is not wrong. For many of you, I want you to know that I know that since April, in fact, since you finished your work, there's an agitation. Let us go. What are they keeping us here for again? I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I told the principal, I said, yes, I know the children want to go. Go, 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 go. But they must wait for me. They must wait to collect their blessing. And they cannot rush me. He said, you know, we want to do it. I said, you can't. They must wait. That's why we are here on the 14th. Praise the Lord. And thank you that you waited. But I want you to know that the agitation in your spirit, say, the place we are is too narrow for us. It's normal. You have grown to a level now that you need expansion. You need to go out of this place. You need to explore yourself. You need to become a man. You need to become a woman. People may say, eh, Calvary Arrow boys. No, I don't call you boys anymore. You are men. These sisters, they are ladies now. Hallelujah. I normally address them as ladies. Because they are now ladies. When we were growing up, girls that are just 14, 15, they were pregnant. And they were already married. So that God has kept you here. You are 17, you are 16, you are 18. It's all right. But that there's a desire to break out. There's a desire to be free. There's a desire to be on your own. I'm not saying that is wrong. It's okay. We can't keep you beyond here. After today, we will send you, we'll pray for you, release you at that gate, and say, when you are coming back, you come to greet us as graduates, as Kakav, hallelujah. You come with your great results. I never, that's why you see, I'm sorry. Let me explain to you. I never expect that I will have any student that we will train in six years and he will be coming back for a receipt. That was why Calvary Arrows had no space for repeaters after your work. Some say, ah, no, they should have created this place. Some of us that did not make our English. Some of us that did not make mathematics. We should come back. Not here. My plan for you is that you must make it once. And go and face the world. And for the younger one, you make it once in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't have alternative. When we are building the hostel, we deliberately make sure that the hostel will not take more than 480 or 500. Because I did not plan for repeaters. I say, let's expand it. And some of them will go and say, no. We have no plan for it. People are persuading me. I say, no, sir. If I make a room now for repeaters, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What will happen? Some say, well, even if I don't make it, I can always come back. I will do remedia. Not here. When there was need for remedia somewhere else, we are creating a different facility somewhere, not here. They say, but why don't you bring them to Calvary Road? They will spoil our vision. Some of you may not know why we do what we have done. It's because of what God told us. We are insisting on it. So that you are saying, let us go where we are. It's too narrow for us. It's a good request. And I want you to know that Calvary Arrows will become too narrow for you now. 
you need to be moving into the university. Amen? Hallelujah! These boys are not answering me. I said this place has become too narrow for you. Are you sure? Eh? Yes! What will you be coming back here again to say, hey, I'm, I'm repeating literature? Eh, no. No. Even if you have to repeat something, go and repeat it somewhere else. Don't bring the spirit of repeat to this college. I don't need that spirit here. Principal, are you hearing? Eh? Vice principal, you know what I've said to you all the time. That's it. You can't change it. You can't beg me for it. I will not agree. These children are going now. And they are going forward, backward never. God is going to go with you in the name of Jesus. But now look at the first issue. They say, let us go, we pray you unto Jonah. And take this every man a beam and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And the man of God said, go ye. Since you know how to go, be going. That was going to be a terrible mistake. We have agreed that you need to go from here. And it is good. We have agreed that this place has become too narrow. You need to enlarge. We have believed now that you need to move into something greater than what we have done so far. But I want you to know that it is not a severance of relationship. Don't break your relationship. So one of them said, be content. I pray with you. Go with your servants. And what did he say? I will go. If you ask the Lord to go with you, the Lord will go with you. Am I? Are you hearing me? But you say, well, let me just go by myself. I don't need all this, uh, all this prayer, prayer, all this uh, cover, uh, uh, wake up in the morning, read your Bible. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I will not stop you. I say, go ye. Because after all, six years was our covenant with God over your life. That God should give us children that we will sit upon for six years. And by six years, we are trusting that they will turn to become something for God. But that other man said, be content. Go with your servants. That request has three dimensions. Number one, that request is first made to God. Father, as I leave Calvary Arrows College, go with me. Will you pray that prayer? Lord, go with me. I cannot go alone. Go with me. Go with me to the university. Go with me to the next level. Go with me into life. Go with me. And if you ask God to go with you, what will he do? He will go. God will go with you in the name of Jesus. What is the second dimension of that request? Is the request to the to Elisha, the disciple, to ask the disciple and say, Sir, I'm going, I need to go, but please, can you keep your eye to go with me? Can I keep the line of communication open so that you can watch and guide me and pray for me? That's the second dimension of it. Go with your servant. Don't break your relationships. Don't discard all that God had used to help you. Don't think you are now a free bird that can fly anywhere. You will fly. But we need to guide you. God will help people who will rise to go with you into several things in the name of Jesus Christ. What is the third dimension of that request? Go with your servant. It is that if you go alone, you miss the divine company. So when he said, go with your servant, what he's saying is that, Lord, anywhere you are not going with me, let me not go there. Can I ask you, decide now. Don't go into any relationship that you can't see Jesus going there with you. 
Don't accept anybody. We say, yeah, you know, let's just start. Let's just start. Start what? When Jesus is not going with you. Don't start anything. Even the course you are going to read. I want you to keep saying, Lord, go with me into this course. So that I may become all you have ordained me to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if the Lord goes with you. And you keep in step with him. This place will be intact. No matter how God uses you, it will remain intact. 30 years, it will be intact. When you get married, it will be intact. When you have been promoted, it will be intact. Because the Lord said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the fire, I will go with you, it will not burn you. Please, let him go with you. May God help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there could be an accident. What did I say? We are sending you forth to succeed. But sometime, there could be an accident. And I want to prepare you for it. I want you to know that sometime, not because you wanted it, but something may happen. Look at that girl. I'm not sure she wanted to, to, to be chained. I'm not sure she wanted to be tied down by all those spirits. But she fell into their hand. And they have now tied her. She became addicted. Addicted to internet. Addicted to Facebook. Addicted to useless WhatsApp. Addicted to Twitter, addicted to all those things that wasted her life. And it's like she will not be able to go. I want you to see, in case there's an accident. In case, as you enter the university, you miss your path. I prayed for you, you will not miss your path in the name of Jesus Christ. But if it happens, is that the end of your dream? Is that the end of your destiny? Is that the end of what God prepared you to be in Calvary Arrows? No. If there's an accident, look at what to do. In verse 4. Is that verse 4? Verse 5. But as one was fell in a beam, what happened? Please, what happened in verse 5? The axe head fell into the water. An accident that you nobody plans for. Sometimes your sharpness may fall into water. You didn't plan that it will fall. Suddenly you discover that the weight of Christ's life in you seem to have disappeared. Suddenly you saw that your prayer life has been eroded. Suddenly you discover that you didn't have door in speaking to other cacaf. You are now hiding in between dangerous, useless women. What do you do? What do you do? What is the practical step to take in case your axe head fell into water? Are you ready? Number one. What did he do? And he cried. And he said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. Look at that. That's a very important statement. And he cried. My sister, if any time you sense that this thing is shaking, and it's fall off. Don't keep quiet. What should you do? Cry. Cry to the Lord. Don't cry to friends. Whose accent has also fallen. You know there are so many people you will meet. They have lost their own fire. So when you say. You know my own accent fell low. You know I'm not able to pray again. I don't know what's happening. 
He said, ah, don't relax. We are all like that. Even my own fell long ago. I'm just managing my wood upon wood. I still go for fellowship, but, you know, there's this guy that has been coming around me and we have been sleeping together. I want to stop it, but, you know, that's life. That's life. So, if your own so fair, there's no problem. Let's go together. Don't cry to victims. If you need to cry to anybody, cry to a victor. Are you hearing me? Don't cry to a captive. Cry. Even if you need help, cry to a captain. Hallelujah. Don't cry to the conquered. Cry to the conqueror. But the first person you will cry to is the Lord. Alas, master. Master, master. Don't let me see say, well, when we left Avariaru, and when I went to the school, and something happened, and the first uh, semester, I couldn't make it again, so that's why. No! Cry! And you know, I normally give all of you my email. Any of you that wanted, you are free to have my email. I discuss with every kaka. I write them. Some of them don't expect that I will have time to write them. I write them. I speak into their lives. Some are talking to me about their marriage. We are discussing it. Some are saying, sir, how do I get through with this? I say, yes, I also went through that before. This is the way. Cry out first to the master, the Lord. Don't keep quiet. Say, oh God, this is not what you said I will be. Not a wood, carry ordinary wood. Where's my accent? Lord, restore me. Restore my prayer life. Restore my Bible study. Restore my fellowship. As you cry, God will come to you. As you see those brothers that were wearing white, how they came and fought and delivered her, you will be delivered. Cry out. When did he cry? As soon as he noticed it. The reason is because when the axe head fell, it fell into water, a moving river. Those of you that did motion when you did physics, you remember that if an object falls into a moving stream, the point at which it falls is not where you will find it. Why? Because the velocity of the stream is going to carry it down. So for you to locate where it is, you have to calculate what is the velocity of the stream, what is the weight of the iron, so that we can calculate where possibly will it be now. Because the acceleration is directly proportional to the mass, the weight. So if he kept quiet, what it means that the thing will go far down the stream and he may not find it again. So what did he do? He cried out immediately. I want you to be immediate. Anytime you feel a loss in your spirit. Anytime you feel cold, cry out. That's what I do for myself. I'm always crying. If I go to preach, and I did not sense the presence of the Holy Spirit on my head. And I just spoke paru paru message. And people just came and clapped and then shook hands with me and said, I believe we like that message. I hated it. I don't like people to like my message. How can I come with an axe and I hit somebody? Did you see this now? What is happening to you now? Did you see now? It is beginning to fall off. How can I hit somebody with an axe? And he'll come and be smiling. I'm looking for genuine repentance. I don't need applause. When your life has changed, then we will become friends. I don't like uh, preaching. And, uh, so when I preach and I don't sense anything, I, sometimes I say, no food again. No food. I say, mommy, I'm not eating now. He said, no, but you have not eaten. I say, I can't eat. 
I don't sense the hand of God in this meeting. I can't eat now. I can't eat now. Keep my food until I get a breakthrough. I'm servicing it. Unfortunately. <sighs> it became light. When it happens like that, what do you do? Cry. After one week. After one month. When should you cry? Immediately. When you cry to God immediately, there's an immediate recovery. There's an immediate restoration. Hallelujah. Now the Bible said, he did not cry to a wrong man. He cried to the Lord who is able to help him. He said, Alas, Master. Is that good English? No. When you are desperate, you don't need to speak Queen's English. You know, for me, what is the meaning of alas? It's just an alarm. If it was me, I don't say alas. I say, yay! Oh, Luo! Aha. Those are my own alarm. Your own alarm may be casa. It depends on where you are coming from. <laughs> You see, the question is that make a quick alarm to heaven. Don't keep quiet. It's urgent. Because that axe head, you may not find it again. Because it has fallen into water. It's not every time your axe head will fall into the ground like this and you can pick it. The devil is always looking for how to remove your axe head and put it somewhere where you will not trace it again. Please, brother. My dear children, cry. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. He knew that this thing that is getting lost now, it was borrowed. God gave me not because I work for it. It was a divine gift in my life. I must not lose it. I must not lose this grace. I must not lose this Provision that God had made for me, it was borrowed. I want you to know that you are living on a borrowed life. The grace of God in your life was borrowed to you. That is the sense that I've been going with for many years. I just know, I say, Lord, it was borrowed. I know that I'm a debtor because I borrowed it. I'm a debtor and I must not die a debtor. I must bring back what God gave me and say, Lord, the thing you gave me has produced 10 more talents. And God said, well done. Enter your rest. I don't want to come back and say, Lord, eh, when you put that in my life, eh, I went to university and then it fell out. And when it fell, me, I look around, I couldn't find it. So that's how everything disappeared. So I'm here. Whatever you want to do to me, that's a bad case. You will never come back empty handed. You will come back with results. In Jesus name. Finally. The man of God said. We have failed it. This is the next important thing. You must know. Where you lose it. The only way to recovery. Is to be able to point to Jesus. Where you missed it. We have felt it. You may need to say, oh God, it was because I was spending more time in the internet. That's where the whole thing is scattered. God said, okay, take me there. Some of you, it may be because your roommate, and you're going to meet some roommates that are terrible. One of my caca children was telling me that her roommate was terrible. I said, so what are you doing? He said, well, may I just keep quiet? I said, no. Go and take over. He said, daddy, How? I said, take over. When you get to the room now, put one of Brother Billy's message. Let it be playing loud. Since they are also playing disco loud. Fire for fire. Don't keep quiet. I said, when you go, call one of them and say, my sister, the way you are living here, where is your hope? 
I was wishing that your life would turn around. Tell her. She may say, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. She won't be able to sleep that night. Go and confront them. So, what was that? Where fell it? You must take Jesus to where it is. Don't be general. Whenever your prayer life has reduced, take Jesus to where you missed it. Whenever you notice that your heart is beginning to do something strange, remember where it happened. Take Jesus there. Where fell it? And wants to show the Lord where he fell. Look at the miracle now. And he showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it in there and the iron swim. Your iron will swim. The stream of life will not take away your iron. Worldliness will not take away your axe head. Friends will not carry it away. The thief will not steal it. It will swim again in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm ready now to pray for you. I'm ready for you now to take your charge. They were saying, if you are here and you are still empty, don't go away from being here empty. I agreed. You won't go empty. All you need to do is to cry. Say, Master, ah, how can I leave Cavalry Arrows and I don't have something in my hand? Put my iron back and God will visit you in the name of Jesus. Now, shall we rise? I want the Cavalry Arrows children to rise. And I want everybody else to help me pray. You will pray for yourself. Because it's possible that your own acts have fell long ago. And you have been talking to colleagues who are also victims. You are talking to captives. You are talking to those that have been conquered. You are comparing notes with those who have failed. Stop that. Cry to the master this afternoon and say, Lord, I thought it was my daughter I follow come. I didn't know you want to address my case. I cannot go home without my axe head. Cry to God. I thought it was my son we came to celebrate. I didn't know that you want to do a restoration in my own life as well. Cry to God. Let's pray together. Can we pray? Now my brothers, I want you to just lift up your own hands. Lift up your two hands. And just say, God, you say I will be your battle axe. I am the wood. You are the iron. You are the axe head. Don't let anything come between me and you that it will fall off. I don't want to miss my connection with you. Let's pray. Start praying. Brothers, all of you, please join me to pray. Call on God this morning. This afternoon, let's call on God that this short opportunity of prayer, the Lord himself will stand by you and give you victory. Sister, maybe you are a senior student. Maybe you are a senior brother. But you can see that your own accent has scattered. Maybe you are a parent. And you listen to me saying, this message is your own. Please, don't hide it. Don't say, how can I be praying in front of my children? No, we are in front of God. We are crying to the master of us all. I told you that what I do every day is to service that junction. I don't want it to fall. I need to suck it to make sure it is strong. I wake up early. I'm saying, Lord, don't let it fall. Satan is looking for how to catch it. He will not get it. My brother, may God answer your prayer. My young sister, may the Lord answer your prayer. Today is an important day. You are God's battle axe. You are the wood he wants to use. Himself is going to be the iron head in your life. You will not fail. Even if there's an accident, you will not die in that accident. You will simply cry to the master. There will be a restoration immediately. And as you collect it, you make sure it doesn't fall out again. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, please walk in this meeting. Please write this message upon the heart of these children. Look, Lord, I'm asking that from this meeting, from this commissioning for them, they are going to do exploits. Each of their lives will be your battle axe. As we have called them God's battle axe, so they will be. 
and we will celebrate what you are doing in their lives. The axe head will never fall. No matter how it shake, Lord, you will keep it in place. Please keep their lives in place. Thank you. Now, I'm praying for Calvary Arrows graduates, but I sense I should pray for everyone who has a need for restoration this morning. Did you sense that something was lost? Your marriage was strong at the beginning, but something fell out. Since then, you have been looking for it. But you've not cried to the master. You've cried to men. This afternoon, please, in two minutes, because I don't have time, you are not the focus of this meeting. But God, who never looks away from somebody who has need, has said, we should give you a space. Would you like to pray? Lord, restore my battle axe. Restore my axe head. It fell when I was looking for business. It fell when I got into that job. I know when it fell. But this afternoon, Lord, do your miracle. Cut a stick. Cause the iron to swim again. Thank you. Thank you. I expected that God is working in a very dynamic way in our midst. And if the Holy Spirit is touching you and said, this is the time to cry to God. Can I request you to please stand? Stand up. And let me join your voice together with mine. And say, Master, it was borrowed. The ministry God gave you, you are not able to fulfill it again. Because the, the cutting edge has fallen out. Lord, restore me. Where are you? Please stand up. Wherever you are. If you lift up your right hand, please stand up. Permit me to call on God. You see, for us, parents, teachers, disciples, we are partners. We are partners. I don't expect you that you came all the way to Boko and God will not bless you. He must bless you. Thank you. Please stand if the Lord is urging you. Even a cavalry arrow, you need to stand. Say, God, I'm losing something. Something happened and I lost it. Lord, have mercy on me. Thank you. God bless you. Please leave that hand above your head and permit me to call on God for you now. Raise it above your head and I will be praying. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, this afternoon, before I will focus on my children cavalry arrows, I pray for these friends of mine, parents, mothers, Senior sisters, senior brothers who have a need of recovery. Your promise over their lives has not changed, but the axe head has fallen. As I stand with them this afternoon, let there be a restoration. All those who lift up those hands, Holy Spirit, bring restoration. Do something eternal for them. That from this meeting, what looked impossible for iron to swim on top of water is impossible for man. Do the impossible this afternoon. Restore to them what the enemy has stolen. What the canker worms and the palmer worms have destroyed. Father, bring it back in the name of Jesus Christ. Their first law, their first seal, their first utterance. The way they used to understand the things of the spirit. It fell out. Today, oh God, I call upon you. You are the master. You are the master of all situations. You are the master of every issue. Master, respond to our cry. Cause them to find restoration. And that from this afternoon, apart from rejoicing with our, our children, they will also have a joy. Of an inner restoration. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit thank you for the children. That are standing up. Lifting up beseeching hands and say God. You are sending me out here. I will not be a casualty. I will not be a captive. You have made me a conqueror. You have made me. A captain. You have made me. 
You have made me one that will cause your glory to break forth. Lord, please preserve that junction. Don't allow this access to fall down. Don't let anybody trick me out of it. And even if there's anything that seems to be lost, even for them, restore it now. Bring them back to their own space and cause them to go forth here in the name of the Lord. Thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Living Seed Media brings